Hey everybody, I'm Dr. Richard Stevenson and I'm the Director of Education at Stevenson Dental Solutions. I'm also Emeritus Professor of Clinical Dentistry at UCLA. And this is our teaching center where we conduct many hands-on courses all year long. So today we're going to cover the PFM on the maxillary first molar, tooth number three. So the burrs we're going to use for this are the ones that are used by many schools, the 6847016 is a coarse diamond followed by the fine diamond 8847016, the end cutting burr 8839012, which is an optional burr to use, and then we have an interproximal burr, this 850012, and then the chamfer burrs, the 6878K and the 8878K, and then of course the footballs, the 6379 and 8379023s. The approach today is going to be utilizing the vertical pilot hole or depth cut technique using a 330. The 330 burr is commonly known as a 1.5 millimeter long carbide, but actually it's 1.6. So we can utilize this burr in a few areas along the occlusal to give us an idea of how much 1.5 millimeters or so would look like. And when we make our depth cuts or reduction planes, we'll have these as fiduciary landmarks to follow. You can experiment with different ways of making these depth cuts. Right now I'm showing you three in the center and then also I'm going to make a few on the non-functional cusps and then I'll make some on the functional cusp on the lingual side. All of them are being made at approximately 1.5 millimeters in depth and I think that this will serve very nicely for you to reduce the preparation occlusally. It's really common to under-reduce PFMs. Laboratories are constantly dealing with under-reduced preparations from dentists and students are suffering from very thin temporary crowns when they're making crowns in the laboratory. They notice that their crowns are nearly perforating in certain areas and translucent. So we need to Take a step back, I think, as educators and as students and dentists, and make sure that we're not under-reducing preparations. This is a 6847016, and the reason for this diamond is that it's 1.1 millimeters at its tip and 1.6 millimeters at its widest area. So I think that this works out pretty well for us if we just understand the measurements of those two portions of this diamond. Right now I'm just making the typical pattern across the C-plane, which would be the the sail shape on the distal and the sail shape on the mesial. And in the middle, the open book type of look. And now we're utilizing exactly the same inclination we just used for the C-plane. We're going to use that again for the A-plane. You can turn the burr upside down if you need to, if the head of the handpiece is hitting the C-plane while you're performing the A-plane, you can turn the burr upside down. Here we're using the uh, burr to create the B-plane, the middle plane, and just working across it Uh, understanding that those depth cuts are going to be a constant reminder of where we want to end up going. You know, if you've been following me on YouTube for a while, you know that I have many different approaches to preparing teeth. And the reason for that is everyone works a little bit differently. People need to find a technique that they're comfortable with, that is reproducible, repeatable, highly competent, and then go with it. So I'm just showing you another one of many different methods to reduce preparations. Obviously, I've sped this up a little bit so we can get through the video a little bit more efficiently. But you notice that these depth cuts that we know were for sure 1.5 millimeters. I mean, it was undeniably correct in our measurements. You notice how these are continuing to remind us of areas where we need to reduce more. 
Let's make sure that when we use this 6878K016, we're following along the long axis of the preparation we're intending to make. This means that the most gingival aspect around the tooth, let's just say on the lingual and facial, probably two to three millimeters of axial wall height, should be tapered very nicely at three degrees per side. In other words, six degrees of total occlusal convergence. This is a chamfer burr, so it's going to give you a, a margin or a finish line that would be more appropriate for metal and not ceramic, like in the case of a PFM with a porcelain butt joint margin on the facial. This burr would not be your final burr. But I think that what's really cool is you can focus on making a full gold crown prep first, and then we can make the modifications to the PFM. I do like to try to push the burr as far as I can interproximally, right? So that we can get a little bit of a smaller proximal piece to remove with the needle shaped burr later. And you can take a pencil and run it inside of this internal line angle and you can see your taper. You can actually visualize that very easily. So now we're ready for the needle shaped burr. There are so many of these. This is an 850012. Another one that we like is the A59010, which is a little bit thinner, but at the same time, thinner burrs become a little bit harder to control. They become more wobbly in the handpiece, and they are typically longer. But uh, if you use this by just stroking through the interproximal in this kind of uphill manner, like you're walking upstairs, so starting with the tip and then engaging the tooth and then pushing it upward, you can eventually paint through the interproximal. And then while you're there at this point, I would just go around the tooth several times and get it so it's a little bit more even. And now we're ready to line up the burr with the secondary planes and maybe make a, a reduction here. You know, the, the gingival zone or that gingival one third is all about retention, but the middle and upper portions of your PFM prep have more to do with contours. And so having just a single plane here wouldn't make sense. You want to tip the burr so that it follows the natural contours of the adjacent teeth, but at the same time, you don't want to extend this all the way down to the finish line in that manner because then you would lose retention. So just keep in mind that we have different zones. We have a retention zone that is located in that lower one third of your axial wall. Then you also have a contour zone, which would be in the maybe the middle to upper third. And then that has nothing to do with the functional cusp bevel. The secondary plane that you cut on the lingual has nothing to do with the functional cusp bevel. Those are two distinct planes. Remember, functional cusp bevels, occlusal reduction, secondary planes, contour. You can see we're just trying to establish the right contour in that upper portion. I think it's just really key that no matter where you are in the preparation, you're always thinking, what is it that I'm trying to accomplish at this moment? Why am I holding the burr the way I'm holding it? Is this because I'm trying to get a deeper axial wall and maintain retention? Is it because my axial wall is deep enough, but I don't have enough retention, it's over tapered, I need to upright the burr? Or am I focusing maybe on a contour zone, that secondary plane, both on the facial and lingual. Take a good look at your prep and see where you need to make some modifications so you have more uniformity in the areas where maybe you're a little shallow. Or maybe look for areas that could be potentially undercut, rough areas on the occlusal that you know you want to smooth, and then set your goal, set your intention for that, and then go ahead and execute. I'm not using the handpiece with full speed. We're using the handpiece right now with partial 
foot pedal depression. This is, this is a stall out sort of approach. And the stroke that I'm using on here would be called a brush stroke. So the burr is not laying on the tooth continuously. It's intermittently removing itself from the surface so we can have a little bit better control of the final outcome. The 8847016 is a fine diamond and it has a flat end on it. It's good for shoulders, but it's also really good to clean up occlusal reduction areas and maybe get out that last little bit of the depth cut. Use the end of it here maybe to make the B plane a little flatter, which has sort of a heart shape to it. When we go from an FGC to a PFM, it's all about shoulder creation. And we really don't need the shoulder where the porcelain butt joint is going to be located wrapping into the distal area. It, it, this shoulder zone can go from the aesthetic zone on the mesial to an area on the distal that would end at approximately the distal buckle line angle of the tooth. And then you have these little transition zones between the shoulder and chamfer that probably measure about two to two and a half millimeters or so. Little transition area there. So now let's go back to this 6847-016 and very, very carefully start to establish the proper depth along the shoulder. Shoulders should be approximately 1 to 1.2 millimeters in their ideal form. Some suggest that shoulders could be up to 1.5 millimeters, but we've taken a good hard look at that and we've seen that when you're 1.5 millimeters, deep axially, there's so much tooth structure that gets removed above that area that we believe it's a bit aggressive. So I think if we can focus on one millimeter initially and perhaps get a little bit deeper after you're finishing, I think that would be a good idea. Typically we like to have the finish line location about 0.2 to 0.5 millimeters super gingival. It might even be almost at the tissue level but you don't want to go below. You can use the RGS-3, which is one millimeter wide, to give you an idea if you are accomplishing this requirement. Notice that you create a huge undercut and bulge on the facial when you're focusing on the shoulder. Because remember, the shoulder has to be 90 degrees relative to the root surface area below it. So you are gonna create this undercut area and it's not a problem, it's just a matter of managing it once you create it. The key is not to forget to remove the bulge above this area. And it makes sense, right? Because if you want to have 1 to 1.2 millimeters down at the gingival, you're going to need to have progressively more metal, opaque, and ceramic above that so that you have a nice looking PFM. And see, we're getting close, but not quite, because that undercut is pretty devastating. So we have to just keep removing the bulge above the undercut to solve the problem. Once you create the shoulder, you create an undercut. Go back and remove the undercut. That's the key. You know, preparations are about making errors or creating errors or unwanted situations during the preparation itself. And it's not panicking or, you know, being overly concerned that the error is going to sink you. The, the key is to understand that it's a natural part of the progression of a preparation and it just needs to be managed. And I think that's a really, a really good attitude to take while performing preparations. So now we've got the desired contour, we've got the desired depth. We're just going to do a little bit of refinement along the finish line, just at the shoulder. You can use this with a slow speed, with a flat ended diamond, maybe a fine grit diamond, or you could even use one of the end cutting diamonds, which are really great that we talked about earlier in this video. You know, PFMs are difficult preparations. So if you feel challenged by this preparation, 
uh, you're not alone. I mean, this is probably one of the most complex, demanding preparations that you can get assigned in a dental school or that you need to per, you know, perform on a patient. So I think at this point, we've got the basic measurements all there. The prep is not completed because we need to do some finishing. And for that, we're going to want to use some type of a finishing carbide like a 7102 or 7901 to, to, to remove the sharp edges between the planes so that the lab work will be facilitated. We don't want to have these sharp internal areas that could chip off in the stone. So just taking a little bit of time to remove those and blend everything will, I think, produce a much better preparation in terms of its appearance, but also actually how you would fabricate it. This is a Jiffy Green Polisher. This is completely optional. I do like doing this with my patients because I like to create nice, smooth preparations. And I think you can see that it, it turns out uh, reasonably nice. And our PFM preparation, I think, has come to a conclusion on this molar. I have more PFM preps coming. Lots of ideas that you have suggested to me in the comments that I have taken seriously and we're trying to implement. So be patient, and I will try to get videos out as often as I can. I am a very busy clinician and educator, so it does take time to get these videos done. But I certainly appreciate your loyalty and sharing these with your friends. And I hope that you have a great day, and I'll see you next time.